Fedora 43 Beta has been out for quite some time now and I have been testing it for the past several days. Uh, well, it would be wrong to say that I was testing because I literally installed it on my main PC. And that is the trust that I have with Fedora. Even with the beta variants, I just install it on my PC. And I've been doing that for the past several generations. Now, uh, let's begin with the new installer. Now, honestly, I have not seen the new installer before this, so it would be my first impression because I updated my Fedora 42 with the 43 directly from there. So, yeah, let's see how the new installer looks. And after that, we can cover the rest of the things. Okay, where is the installer? Oh, here we have it installed to hard drive. You will notice that uh, things are a bit glitchy over here. I don't know why. That might be because of the new 4K recording that I'm doing over here uh, without a 4K monitor. I got myself one of those video cards in order to do that trick. And turns out it works. Okay, here we have uh, the new installer. You know what? I actually have seen this before. I remember it once when I was testing the rawhide version of Fedora. But that was in Fedora 41 or 40 Rawhide. I don't really remember. But yeah, I have seen this interface. But uh, it kind of looked incomplete during that time. And it frankly looks still incomplete. Because I kind of like to talk about the design perspective too, you know. It's a bit too boxy for GNOME, I think. I think I know the reason because it is literally running on Firefox. Because it is the web UI installer. So... Yeah, that might be the reason behind that. But overall, the user interface inside looks very nice, but rounded corners on the outside would have been nicer. But other than that, the entire interface is quite like simplified. So it's literally just a four step process. So first you just select the, the language. Next is the installation method where you can select the disk. Then you have the storage configuration, uh, which also includes that encryption. And then finally, review and install which also shows the automatic like partitions done by Fedora, which is pretty handy for newcomers. Also, it uses the BTRFS, which is great. Okay, let's now close this thing because uh, we already have Fedora installed for quite some time. So I guess I'll just power off this. Am I powering off the... <laughs> yeah, I'm powering off the virtual machine. Yeah, because else I would just lose my recording. I tried as much as possible to make this the stock GNOME experience because I had a number of themes, extensions, everything installed along with Conkey and all. So I like to customize GNOME. The first thing that I noticed over here is this new animation, not just there. I also noticed it here. I don't know what you think about that, but I think there should be a limit to what you try to achieve in terms of consistency. I understand very well from where this animation style is coming from, which is from here, about page. This new animation style was introduced a few generations back in GNOME, and it is now getting included everywhere. In the action center, in over here, in the calendar and notification, and even in the right-click menu, which I don't think was necessary. I, I think just, just having it straight down was better. But anyway, yeah, consistency after all. But other than that, there are some more new features in GNOME 49. So let me also show you the new apps. First is the new image viewer. So it's a very smooth experience. Just look at this, how fast it is. It quite literally feels effortless. And you also get these rotate options and some more quick edits. So you can just crop the image very easily. This is very handy for me because I post like screenshots and everything when I post some Evolve updates. And there are times that I don't really like a portion of the screenshot. Maybe I want to reuse or repurpose an image. I posted an Evolve update today, 23rd October, today morning itself. And there I, I guess I did a bit of cropping in one of the image. Very useful feature. Next is the all new video player. Let me show you a video, a random video from here, for example, one of the screencasts. So yeah, as you can see, it's a borderless video player. It's, it looks really modern. I think it's, it looks great user interface wise, but there are some problems, um, especially for new users who won't be knowing what is the problem with the video or maybe not able to get the video player. But for example, this one is a video from my iPhone and it is encoded in H.265, okay? And uh, obviously, this does not work by default, and it just shows this blank screen, and the audio plays back. So uh, that person might not be able to know, like, what is wrong with this. But if you open it with the older totem, 
it shows what is the problem that is you don't have the codecs that you need so you need these files in order to install so that person knows that okay i need to install these things in order to get it to work that feature is not there um, i understand that fedora is in beta but gnome 49 is not in beta so this i think should have been here let us move on to the next one that is nautilus the user interface is a bit upgraded the best thing over here is the search settings you can select the file type audio documents folders images pdf spreadsheet so the search experience basically has been very much upgraded so let me also cover the papers app over here but i guess uh, it was released uh, several days back and covering gnome 49 only in a fedora video does not make any sense but anyway i'll also talk about some more problems that i faced in gnome 49 and then i'll move on to the next one um, that is the new papers app basically it is okay it is great but yeah it's a bit slow also i have another brochure for example this one if you open it it again uh, takes a lot of time to load uh, which is actually okay it will take time if it is a high quality file but uh, the problem is there needs to be some sign that it is loading first when i tried to open this on uh, papers i just thought that maybe my file is corrupted i could not download the entire file properly and then i closed it again download it again and then i understood it was actually opening now if you see with the older version of the document viewer that is i guess this is evans if i'm not wrong yeah evans uh, you can see here's a small loading icon i mean indicator so uh, that helps quite a bit enough talking about the user interface let's move on to the next part and that is the rpm version so the rpm version that comes with this release of fedora is actually the rpm 6.0.0 and you might have noticed that in the previous version of fedora it was rpm 4.x and in a single version they actually jumped two versions of rpm but it turns out that there were some problems with the last release of rpm that is rpm 5 which was released all the way back in may 2007 so because of that problem many distros actually switched back to the rpm 4 release and after that it was kind of decided to not use the version 5.0 name to prevent confusion and directly just go to version 6.0 there's just no rpm 5 uh, it's kind of like windows 9 one plus 14 and uh, iphone 9 they never came out similar but not the same but all of this is actually a good thing because there are new cryptography signatures full key ids fingerprints and more basically your system is far more secure than it was previously and there is far less chance of a malicious package creeping in to your system Fedora also claims that they have significantly improved the startup time, but honestly, I have not noticed any difference. So I think it is more intended for those who use older hardware and not newer hardware. By older, I mean uh, hard drives, not SSDs. So since I have a SSD, the difference is not very noticeable. As you can see, it's quite, it's okay. It's I mean, it is fast, but I did not notice any difference compared to the previous version. So I, I would say it's pretty much the same still in version five, uh, 43, especially if you are on newer hardware. But this is also a step in the correct direction because many actually install Linux just in order to give a new life to their older PCs. And last but not the least are the new wallpapers because uh, the artists uh, who are behind these beautiful stuff they have created it looks really nice so there are several new gnome 49 wallpapers and the main fedora wallpaper is this one it follows the same type of design style like they used to in the previous wallpapers also so it looks very pretty so this was this was i guess in the previous version and as you can see uh, it's kind of like the same art style and i think the artist behind this did a pretty incredible job it's lovely and that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to Fedora for giving every one of us this beautiful product along with Gnome developers, everyone who was behind this thing. And uh, it's pretty much my favorite distro right now. It has been my favorite distro for the past several generations of Fedora and it still is. Thank you so much for watching again. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.